Why are the people brave enough to hold Trump to account, mostly black and brown? Um, you know, Trump and his sons just put a bullseye on the, on the Hispanic back of Judge Marichon's daughter, uh, Lauren Marichon, um, and identifying her by name and identifying her by picture on his Nazi-infested social media site. And, you know, predictably, she's now receiving threats of violence, as is her father, Judge Mershon, who was born in Colombia, by the way. Why? Because the stock in trade of fascists is violence and the threat of violence. This is how they rise to power. When Viktor Orban was rising to power in Hungary, for example, his right-hand man led a torchlight march into the uh, Buda, Budapest Roma neighborhood, the gypsy, uh, what used to be called gypsies, threatening to burn the gypsies out. They fled in terror out of their homes. Most recently, Orban started arresting people who defame him on social media. Fascist movements within democracies are always minority movements and have been throughout history, from Mussolini and Hitler to Pinochet and Putin. And because they're minority movements, fascists always use violence to cow enough people that legitimate political challenges to them quietly die. I mean, it's just that simple. And we're seeing this exact same phenomena today, you know, with, uh, with the, the Trump MAGA fascist movement. What's, what's interesting to, to me, though, is that while Trump recruited people to violate the law with his fake elector scheme in Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, Nevada, New Mexico, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin, only Fonnie Willis in Georgia had the courage to criminally prosecute him and the other people involved. And, of course, she's not only receiving regular death threats, but now Jim Jordan has tried to drag her through the mud in D.C. after this right-wing judge, Scott McAfee, allowed weeks of baseless, nationally televised character assassination. Uh, similarly, although Trump apparently committed massive bank, tax, and insurance fraud in multiple states, only Letitia James in New York had the courage to prosecute him and his company. She and her family have also received death threats and promises of violence. Just this week, he, pull, he promised to pull a Hitler on her. His lawyer, Alina Haba, told Fox News, quote, Letitia James is not going to get away with it. We will come at them. We will come hard and we will literally fight until the truth comes out. Literally fight? Yeah, violence and the language of violence are, as I said, the stock and trade of fascists. The legal ground around Washington, D.C. is just littered with Trump's crimes, his violations of the Constitution's Emoluments Act, which is a crime. The Constitution is the the supreme law of the land. The Hatch Act, five years in prison for using the White House as a political prop. Trump did it all the time. He, hell, he held an RNC meeting at the White House in violation of the Hatch Act, five years in prison. He's multiple violations of campaign finance laws. I mean, you know, in the tunes of hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars. And so far, the only person with the courage to prosecute him for his campaign finance violations and this is one that occurred in New York City, has been Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg. And so guess what? Alvin Bragg is now, and his family, are the subject of death threats and promises of violence. You know, it's got to be both terrifying and exhausting to take on America's modern fascist movement, this MAGA movement. Trump criminally stole thousands of top secret documents from the United States, making them available to foreign spies and ne'er-do-wells who could have sold them for a small fortune, say $2 billion to Saudi Arabia. By storing them in a room conveniently containing an industrial high-speed copying machine. Jack Smith's prosecution is only scratching the surface, but even with that, it looks like Judge Cannon is going to give Trump a pass. Nonetheless, Trump has attacked both Smith and his wife, and his MAGA followers have promised violent retribution to both. Observers are wondering out loud if Cannon is cutting Trump slack because she's afraid of the violence. I think that's the most likely reason, frankly. I don't think it's loyalty because he appointed her. I think it's because she doesn't want the mob to show up at her house. Because that's what fascists do. The secretaries of state of literally every state in the union were witness to Trump's crimes. Everyone saw him attempt to overthrow the government of the United States in violation of the 14th Amendment. But only, only two a woman in Maine, and a woman in Colorado 
were willing to say, yeah, we're going to hold them to account. And when they did, and the Colorado Supreme Court said, yes, we, uh, we agree with this, death threats came for the Supreme Court. NBC's Ryan Riley said, the threats fill, fit into a predictable and familiar pattern seen time and time again after legal developments. So, I mean, this is, this is you know, uh, Ruby Freeman and Shea Moss, when, when Trump named them, the first thing that happened was a call came into Freeman's answering machine saying, kill yourself now so we can save the ammo. Moments later, an email arrived that said, I hope the federal government hangs you and your daughter from the Capitol Dome, you treasonous piece of S word. I pray that I will be sitting close enough to hear your next snap. Just a few hours later, a mob with torches and a bullhorn showed up at Freeman's house. I mean, this is not normal in American politics. Mitt Romney talked about how, how his Republican colleagues were afraid to vote to convict Trump because they didn't want their families harassed by Trump's fascist hordes. This is how fascism takes over. But the most fascinating thing about this, of all the circumstances surrounding Donald Trump and his nine-year political crime spree, is that with the exception of Jack Smith, all of the people who have chosen to prosecute him, and again, Jack Smith was appointed, all the people who have chosen to prosecute him, Benny Thomas, Thompson, excuse me, Letitia James, uh, Alvin Bragg, Fonnie Willis, they're all black. Why is this? I, I honestly don't know. I'm not even sure if it's like racist to raise the question. I mean, I, it's a, but why would that be? Is it that black people who fought and worked through the system to get their law license and, and law degrees have internalized, you know, Thomas Paine, the abolitionist Thomas Paine, who's, uh, who called, you know, who said this is, you know, the promise of America that they've internalized that? Is it they, that they and their ancestors have lived through so much struggle and hardship that people, white people like me can hardly imagine that, you know, as we see how Fonnie Willis has been treated by this racist judge, that they've not just survived, but they've committed themselves to fighting on? Or is it that these black prosecutors are the normal ones? They're just doing their jobs. And all those white prosecutors, and there's literally hundreds of white prosecutors. I mean, Trump committed the, the, the fake elector crime in seven different states. Trump, Trump committed, I mean, if, 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 every state could have hold, it kept him off the ballot. I mean, there's just no, no, almost no end to people who could have prosecuted or gone after Trump. Why is it that it's just these black people? Is it because all the white people, is it because the black people are not, you know, noble and brave? They're just normal. They're doing their jobs. And the white people are all cowards? That they've had, you know, centuries of white privilege and family wealth accumulation and they just don't want to risk it by taking on a fascist? I don't know the answer to these questions. I'm putting them to you. What do you think? Why is it? that the only brave people who have stood, and, and, and Trump makes the most of it, right? He calls them all racists, which is his way of saying, hey, have you noticed that black person has the temerity to challenge me, a rich white guy? I mean, this is essentially what he's saying when he calls Fonnie Willis a racist, when he calls Letitia James a racist, when he calls Alvin Bragg a racist, when he calls Benny Thompson a racist. I mean, what the hell's going on here? That said, we need more white people to get into the fray. Because this year, with Trump literally fighting for his wealth and freedom, it's going to get more intense than anything we have ever seen. And I just want to, for the record, say I am proud to live in a country alongside these brave black men and women. And, and a few Hispanics, uh, you know, Judge Mershon and his daughter. Although, again, he didn't volunteer for this. He was picked. The people who volunteered, the people who stepped up. I have such admiration for these people, but where the hell are the white people? <laughs>